Hi, I'm John, welcome to Premium Builds. In this video, we're taking a look at the Zen 3 CPUs from AMD. We're focusing in on the 5600X and the 5800X with a look at gaming and streaming performance. Which of these CPUs fits the task best, and is the 5800X worth the extra money? We were lucky enough to grab a Ryzen 5800X on launch day, and this is a retail CPU, not a review sample. It's incredibly high performance and stretches our current highest end GPU, the RTX 2080 Ti, to the limit even at lower settings. The GPU die is identical for both CPUs, with the 5800X having a fully enabled core complex with 8 cores on a single die, and the 5600X just having 2 cores fused off in the foundry. Otherwise, they're identical in cache size and function, as well as the I.O. chip with which the cores communicate with the rest of the system. The very small difference in boost clock of 100 MHz is negligible, but we were eager to find out if the difference between 8 cores and 6 cores is measurable in any of our benchmarks. We've used this single chip to emulate the Ryzen 5600X by disabling two cores in Ryzen Master. The test here is simple. Does losing two cores negatively impact gameplay performance or your ability to stream your gameplay on a single system? We ran all of our testing on an MSI B550 mortar motherboard combined with 16 gigabytes of RAM at 3600 MHz CL16 and our RTX 2080 Ti because our RTX 3080 is still stuck in the post. Nonetheless, with careful attention to GPU loading throughout the tests, it's easy to isolate when the CPU is the limiting factor. Let's take a look at some synthetic benchmarks first. Cinebench R20 scales perfectly with core count because it renders tiles in parallel, each core handling its own chunk of work. The 5800X scores 5,976, the 5600X just shy of 4,500. That's exactly three quarters of the performance, which is understandable since it's three quarters of the core count. Clock speed and single core throughput remain the same. Firestrike tells a similar story, but brings GPU performance into the mix as well with a series of combined tests. The important takeaway here is that GPU performance is unaffected. Both configurations score almost identically, and it's no surprise again that the easily parallelizable CPU tests suffer from missing two cores. The same situation arises in TimeSpy, with the GPU score identical irrespective of core count, but combined tests and scores suffering from fewer cores. Those tests come as no surprise then, but does a lower core count matter for the games we're looking at? Let's start with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. We've run it at 1080p medium settings to expose CPU performance as much as possible. These runs report being 50% GPU bound, so we're CPU limited half the time. You can see that there's absolutely no difference in performance between 6 and 8 cores. At 1440p high settings, a much more appropriate setting for this CPU and GPU combination, we're now 99% GPU bound, and again performance is literally identical between the two CPU configurations, with a 150fps average for both. Minimum and maximum frame rates are the same as well. Shadow of the Tomb Raider has the most ridiculously consistent benchmark that I've come across. So what can we do to separate out these two CPUs then? Well, a common task is streaming gameplay alongside playing yourself. Since Pascal and Turing, NVIDIA have included the NVIDIA encoder in their GPUs, this hardware encoder is capable of compressing the video feed ready for streaming, and it's become the de facto streaming method for a single PC setup thanks to the overall lower processing load on the CPU. This means more consistent play for the streamer and a better quality video feed for the viewer. However, it's also possible to use software encoding which loads up the CPU more, so we thought it'd be interesting to take a look at the relative impact of that. Here we see an interesting trend in both CPU configurations. In both instances, software encoding has less of a performance impact than hardware encoding. Why is this? Well, the GPU is flat out here, and using the encoder dents its performance a little. However, the CPU has headroom, so it can comfortably encode the stream in the spare cycles when there's nothing the game requires it to do. It knocks about 10 frames per second off the performance relative to when the software encoder isn't running in minimum, maximum and average frame rates whereas NVIDIA's hardware encoder takes about 15 frames per second off of those metrics. The conclusion here? Either CPU is ample for streaming and gaming at sensible settings, and both are powerful enough that it may make more sense to use software encoding than hardware encoding when you're streaming your gameplay. Red Dead Redemption 2 is amongst the most demanding titles currently available. Taking a look at the results here at 1440p high settings, we can see that in all cases there's an instance of frame rates dropping below 40 frames per second across the board, but it's the averages and highs that tell us a bit more of the story here. The 5800X does fare slightly better, with 5 frames per second average over the 5600X at 88 frames per second, and 20 frames per second higher maximums. Running the software encoder brought the two configurations closer, with performance you're unlikely to see or feel a difference between. 
Red Dead 2 then can draw a slight benefit from the higher court count, but it's not decisive. In this benchmark, unfortunately, the NVIDIA encoder failed to complete a benchmark run, therefore I was unable to directly compare the impact of NVIDIA encoding versus software encoding for this title. Finally, let's come on to a couple of titles where high frame rates are really important. Rainbow Six Siege runs exceptionally well at 1080p, and again performance is basically identical between the two CPUs. The only difference is in the lows, with the 5600X 30 frames per second lower and nearly dipping below 300 frames per second. At 1440p high settings, it's identical, and both CPUs exceed 260 FPS at all times. In this title, we see the hardware encoder outperform the software renderer, and that's because in this graphically simple title, the GPU has spare cycles to give, whereas the CPU doesn't. In this game, you're going to be better off using the NVIDIA encoder than you are software rendering. Our last test comes courtesy of Call of Duty Warzone, in Battle Royale conditions. These tests represent an entire battle, against bots as that's the only way I can make the benchmark run last longer than 30 seconds. Each of these runs is about 300 seconds long, and is taken from landing on the ground to the end of the round. We've run this at 1080p medium settings to isolate the CPU. First of all, going head to head, you can see a slight advantage to the 5800X, but it is tiny and I'd challenge any player to notice 8 frames per second's difference when we're approaching 200 frames per second average on both CPUs. Introducing software streaming to the mix does show the core count advantage of the 5800X. It suffers less of a drop in performance versus the 5600X. Again though, NVIDIA encoder actually hinders both configurations more than software encoding. Even with an RTX 2080 Ti at 1080p, the CPU has more headroom here than the GPU. That's quite remarkable and challenges the wisdom of using a GPU-based stream encoding when you have such a capable CPU at your disposal. In conclusion then, it's easy to see why the Ryzen 5600X is the new gaming CPU to beat. It performs exceptionally well under all of these circumstances and matches the Ryzen 5800X in almost all of them. This is at odds to the easily parallelizable workloads we saw in the benchmarks at the start of this video. There, the 5800X shines, but it simply can't translate that advantage into a performance increase in games. Even when we up the ante by adding stream encoding to the to-do list, neither of these CPUs trip up. In fact, they're both powerful enough that we'd recommend streamers experiment with software streaming settings versus NVIDIA's built-in encoder, because it may be you can enhance the performance of your system, both for your own gameplay and in terms of the quality of the stream you broadcast. The Ryzen 5800X is a storming CPU, but it simply doesn't make the case for itself in this test. The $150 you need to spend doesn't realise any performance benefit in gaming even if you're streaming alongside. That $150 would be much better spent on a more powerful GPU, which will actually improve your gaming performance. There are of course circumstances where the Ryzen 5800X does shine, and we'll explore those in future videos. However, at the moment, it's clear to see that at $300, the Ryzen 5600X is the best gaming CPU you can buy. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe if you have. You can also visit Premium Builds to find all the best build guides, advice, and component roundups for your next build.